okay. Um, I know it's kind of um, weird because I was going to probably going to be talking about Bertrand Russell a little bit, and he did smoke he did smoke a pipe. Either way, this video is going to be um, a good little discussion about an article by Willard Van Omer Quine called "On What There Is." It's in um, it's actually in a couple different anthologies because it is a very well known, very famous article in analytic philosophy. So it's very well known, and it really is a um, good article to read if you want to um, basically get a, a start in like um, well at least metaphysics, but definitely also philosophy of language and epistemology even. But um, so we're going to be talk talking about that. Um, I have done um, articles by Quine uh, that I've done um, before have been two dogmas of empiricism and also epistemology naturalized. So I'll be doing this and hopefully I'll be doing other Quine articles in the future. Um, so basically the question of this article is of course by the title uh, on what is there. Um, it's about the riddle of Plato's beard, and I'm gonna get to, to that. And um, you know, there's a lot of things that you know. It's not it's not the longest article, but it's definitely is. There's a lot of stuff going on in it, and I'm not gonna go over all of those things. So I highly recommend this anthology for one. And there, it's a Blackwell companion to metaphysics. Um, well, it's just metaphysics and an anthology, but it is Blackwell um, anthology. But um, the question is on what is there? Um, it's, and of course, there's everything. But then this is a big issue of what non-being is. Um, there are different ways that you can cut at the issue of what of what of, of about non-being. Um, Quine does it one way. Um, um, people like these guys would do it a different way. Uh, like Martin Heidegger, his um, essay, Vasis, Vasis Metaphysic, or What is Metaphysics, he does have a different take on what the Hanbi is or what the nothing is. And I hope to do a, a video about that soon. Um, so we are recognizing or not recognizing certain entities. So we are talking a little bit about ontological commitment as to what things you ontologically commit to, whether you're going to ontologically commit to universals or tropes or um, particulars, properties, whatever you're going to do. Um, and metaphysics are going to you know, definitely do different things with that. Um, but, um, so... And there is also the question of, are there no entities? Is there, there's big issues about non-being. And the riddle of Plato's beard has to do with non-being itself. Um, non-being, the, the riddle is this. The non-being, non-being, must in some sense be. Otherwise, what is it that there is not? Because we have what is, of course, like how this cup is this pipe is it and is I mean, it is just a, it, it it exists there are things that are but there are also things that are not so think about and what Quine does he brings up the um, mythical uh, flying horse by the name of Pegasus um, and He's gonna use that at because Pegasus, you know, doesn't exist as a real concrete thing in this world. Pegasus is a figment of people's imagination and is a part of mythology and a part of a lot of different things. So Pegasus is in some ways. Pegasus is in some ways, um, and Pegasus is, Pegasus is in some ways not. So the riddle of Plato's beard is about not being itself. Um, and I guess that, that, that makes me think of um, 
something that is in this book, Being and Nothingness by Jean-Paul Sartre, the existentialists deal in non-being and not, the nothing. Um, <laughs> so I have a lot of things I want to, you know, I guess talk about with as with the existentialists. Um, so there's a lot of things that I can talk about with their way of doing things, but Quine's going to cut at it a different way because, of course, he is an analytic philosopher as opposed to a continental one. Um, so, if Pegasus were not, then using the word isn't talking about anything. So, if Pegasus is something that isn't, then using that word doesn't mean anything. And this kind of comes back to the logical positivist, I guess, criterion of meaningfulness and meaning itself. Um, you know, uh, Quine is somebody who followed Rudolf Carnap and Moritz Schlick and Otto Neurath and um, Wittgenstein and Russell. So Wittgenstein and Russell kind of and also J.J. E. Moore kind of bred a <clears throat> movement in philosophy called the Logic Positivist Movement and people like A.J. Ayer and so they kind of um, Rudolf Carnap's article, The Elimination of Metaphysics by Logical Analysis, he does kind of, you know, try to condemn metaphysics, or lots of metaphysics, by Heidegger and uh, Hegel and um, the rationalists, even some of them, not quite Descartes, but some of them. Um, but he's kind of just saying that, you know, you can't talk about things that you don't have a criterion of application to. You can't talk about things <coughs> and ascribe meaning to them if there is no criteria of application. So you can't, um, I mean, well, you can't, you shouldn't. Um, real philosophy and real science doesn't, you know, doesn't deal in meaninglessness because meaninglessness is talking about he criticizes Hegel in that, or Heidegger in that article in his um, essay, Basis Metaphysics, because <laughs> Hegel kind of talks about the nothing in a very um, unclear way, um, but continental philosophers are, are themselves unclear, so he's kind of bashing Heidegger and saying that what Heidegger is saying in a meaningless is because there's no way to ascribe any kind of meaning to it, and you can't give meaning to it um, and I've done videos on Carnap and lots of the and lots of videos about logical positivism as to where I've described this a lot better because I haven't really read Carnap or any of the earlier logical positivists in a long while so I've probably done better in those other videos but uh, the issue that Quine brings up in this article is that um, well, it's not an issue, but it's a point. The point, one of the points he brings up is that you can't, um, or that you, <coughs> you shouldn't, um, is that meaning, meaningfulness and meaning, um, comes from it being, comes from it being in some way, and comes from, well, he doesn't use the word, he doesn't use the phrase criterion of application that's kind of Carnap's way of phrasing it but anyway I can go on about that for a while so I'm going to try and once I get more into this then I'll kind of make that point more clear um, saying Pegasus is not is nonsense because we know what Pegasus is Pegasus is that white winged flying horse so we have an idea of what Pegasus is so to say that Pegasus isn't is nonsensical um, denial of Pegasus cannot be coherently maintained. So we can't, that we, we have at least, in the very least, we have an idea of what Pegasus is, therefore we cannot deny him entirely. We cannot deny, we cannot deny Pegasus of any of all being. Um, but Pegasus, you know, so I hope I can, I hope I'm, I hope I'm explaining the riddle clear enough, the riddle of Plato's beard, because I guess I, 
I should kind of maybe do a different video where I kind of explain this better. But, uh, the, you know, the, the riddle of Plato's beard. Um, but, I guess one way of explaining it is in Being in Nothingness by Jean-Paul by Jean Sartre. He's, 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 in, he's in the cafe, and he's waiting for his friend Pierre. Pierre, does, Pierre doesn't show up. So he's sitting across from, it, from an empty seat, which Pierre should be in, but he isn't. Pierre is not there. Therefore, there's a void or an absence there. So absence, in a way, is. The state of affairs of Pierre not being there is, in a way, a being. It, it's not a being, but it, it, it is. So, in a way, a absence or a non-being is, in a way, is. So, I hope I'm kind of explaining how this riddle is that non-being has to be in some sense be has to has to be in some sense um, and it has to um, I guess exist is not the exist can kind of help clear that up but I don't like that word because it has different 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 kind of, different connotations that I don't want to use here um, so Quine talks about um, he, he doesn't talk, he kind of is using a philosopher which he names Mick X to have a point which he's kind of arguing, which Quine is arguing against. Mick X concludes that Pegasus is, um, as an idea in men's minds only. Um, Pegasus is being denied. Pegasus is being denied, but the the idea of Pe the Pegasus idea is not being denied by McEx. Saying Pegasus is not is of course nonsense, and you have this paradoxical thing. Where therefore, if we can talk about Pegasus, how can he not be? And we have the question: of What does it mean to exist? That's one thing. What does it mean to be? The non-existence of Pegasus insists that Pegasus is. Um, Pegasus is just used as an example for anything like, same thing with like a round square. How can you have a square that is round? Um, you know, how, and think you can use, you can use, you, you, you can use unicorns or um, a match carpet or a round square. The round square is a great thing that has been used by many analytic philosophers, including Wittgenstein. Um, um, so the, the round square, I think, is a great example. Um, but Pegasus is good because if we at least can conceive of Pegasus, we can't conceive of, of a round square that well. Um, Pegasus is being denied, but the Pegasus, the, the, the Pegasus idea isn't. So to say that Pegasus doesn't exist, which is what, which is what Mick X is saying, um, this philosopher, that this thinker, this McX isn't really like a philosopher that he's discussing. It's like a position that he's saying. He's making up a philosopher to advocate this position so that he can argue that so that so that so that so Quine can, can argue against it. And later he does come up with a he does talk about a different philosopher which he does argue against. Um, so <laughs> we also have this issue of what are unactualizable impossibles. <laughs> Um, like Pegasus, Pegasus in a, in a round square, but those are both unactualizable, impossible, but they still exist in some way. They still are in some way. Um, so we have what is called the doctrine of meaninglessness of contradictions. And we have the issue of what is meaningful and what isn't. Um, and that's where he says that Plato's beard is something that is very tangled. It's, um, a tangled, difficult thing of uh, the issue between being and, and non-being and how non-being is being. Non-being is in a way, it is. Non-being is as is being. Um, so then we have Russell's theory of descriptions which gives a theory of the meaningful use of names and I plan on doing a video on this soon. Um, Russell's theory of descriptions. <coughs> we have uh, Russell's theory of dis of dis descriptions um, from his article on on denotation and also his 
Uh, he talks about this in his uh, book, in Introduction to Mathematics or something like that. Um, uh, so we have people, you know, um, in books like this and many other philosophy of language um, anthologies and many articles, people who give um, theories as to how a, how so, how a name is meaningful, as to how something is, is meaningful. Yeah. And I mean to do this on, um, I wanted to, I wanted to uh, do this on my whiteboard because I like to use that, what I like to use that whiteboard, but I haven't moved everything out of my aunt's house yet. And I, this is, this is my apartment that I pay for and I have a full-time job now and um, I haven't moved everything out of my aunt's house yet so I and my whiteboard is still there and, uh, hopefully I'll get that back on Tuesday and I'll do some, hopefully do some videos on the whiteboard on Tuesday um, so we have a lot of different philosophers who talk about um, who give theories as to what is meaningful and what isn't like Carnap gives a theory as to what is meaningful and what isn't um, the the logical positivists have in their you know as well as Quine and Ayer and you know um, what and some of those following him have in their articles in their philosophy a epistemology of metaphysics a philosophy of language and sometimes an ethics but that's not as common um, The predic you could also say like Bertrand Russell maybe want to talk about to talk about universals or um, th th things like that that this is the this is in Plato's heaven the predicate of, P of Pegasus is in Plato's heaven and to say so and so is not to say this is not the to to say so and so is not is that a meaningful thing to say. Can I point at something and say this is not? Is that a meaning? Is that a meaningful thing to think to say? I would say no. I don't think that it's. I don't think that it's meaningful to say that something isn't because you have that riddle of the, of the Plato's beard to say that if that to say that so and so is not makes that whole thing that whole statement meaningless. Um, and you have the thing of the issue of ontological commitment, like I said before. Um, we're saying so and so or not so and so is not doesn't commit one to a ontology and it can also be that depending on what you on what ontological entities you commit yourself to that can give a criteria of meaning to that can help with that um, the meaningless of a term doesn't presuppose a entity or the meaningfulness of a term doesn't presuppose an entity so Quine is kind of arguing that um, Pegasus is a to say to to refer to Pegasus that is a meaningful thing. Pegasus is meaningful, but that doesn't mean that we're saying that Pegasus is a entity that 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 exists in the world. Um, there is a gulf between meaning and naming, and to name is, doesn't mean that you're peg, that, that you're going to have meaning. Um, a singular term doesn't have to name to be significant and meaning isn't naming thus you have the whole thing with Freya the whole morning star e evening star thing and Russell solves it solves it one way with this whole thing about descriptions and denotation Freya has this whole morning star e evening star thing which he you know is his puzzle which he discusses in um, multiple articles like uh, this article um, Zinn und Bedeutung or sense and reference. Um, basically, morning star and evening star. The riddle is that morning star and evening star are both the planet, the planet Venus. But do since Venus can appear in the morning and night, morning star, evening star, does morning star and evening star mean the same thing? And Frege's answer to, answer, to, answer to that is no. Thus, he has a twofold notion of meaning. Thus sense or zin um, and reference and bedoy tongue so like 
Bedeutung in German is like a is what is a word for meaning. So reference is 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 denotation. Thus, reference is picking something out. Uh, Morning star and in evening star both refer to the same thing. However, their senses are different. Um, so this we have this confusion between meaning and meaning and naming. Um, meanings are still universals though and they attribute a theory of properties so um, the whole thing here is um, questions about this issue of Plato's beard um, and there are a lot of different other things in here that I could have chosen to look at but um and he says from from among the various conceptual schemes best suited to these various pursuits one the the, the phenomenalistic claims epistemological priority viewed from within the the phenomenalistic conceptual scheme the ontologies of physical objects and mathematical objects are myths the quality of myth however is relative relative in the case to the epistemological point of view this point of view is one among various, corresponding to one among our various interests and purposes. So, we have, I guess, in my opinion, with this article, we have more questions and more questions than we have answers. You kind of, and many with with many articles in analytic philosophy, we are raising more questions than we are answering. Uh, well, that's kind of a lot of. I, that's, in my opinion, what happens a lot. Um, I think that he did answer a couple of questions in that to say that so-and-so is not isn't exactly a meaningful statement or um, proposition um, and also to um, to refer to Pegasus is or a round square or a unicorn that's also something that um, still has meaning even though those things don't have concrete existence and they don't they don't they are not entities so this article also discusses a epistemological priority of things um, and kind of states and kind of he almost suggests at a um epistemological um priority in doing in doing lots of different philosophy um and what that would mean is that um our theory of knowledge comes before a metaphysics or a, or a philosophy of, of language um and in this article what is given is he doesn't really have a, met a metaphysics, but he does discuss metaphysics. So metaphysics, epistemology, and philosophy of language are all discussed and given in this in, in this article. So I guess if you would like me to elaborate more on a certain point, if you think that I should have gone into something more deeply, I kind of did go cursory over right now. I've been doing this video for almost 24 minutes, but... Um, if you would like me to go more in depth into a certain part of this of this article, or if you need something to be cleared up, also if you think I did mess up mess up something and would need to explain it better, do do let me know. I, I really do appreciate comments. Whenever you know, whenever you comment, I get an email immediately. Um, if I'm at work, I'm not gonna look at it because I leave my iPad here. Um, but if I'm home, then I see it imme immediately, and I usually respond if it's a um, constructive comment. So, thank you.